Hello, it's Wednesday, and what better way to start a Wednesday besides doing some math? Um, I've put up your warm-up problems for you. I have six multiplication problems for you. An area and perimeter problem. Remember, perimeter is side plus side plus side plus side until you run out of sides. An area is length times width. And then I have a word problem for you. My word problem is Jaron collected 40 Snickers bars. He told his sister Arya that he would give her two-fifths of the bars if she did his math work for him. Who ended up with the largest share of Snickers? Then I did some extra credit. How many sticker bars did each one get? You grab your pencil and piece of paper. Go ahead and work out those problems. Come back and check with me when you're ready to go over the answers. When I looked at these problems, one thing I wanted to know is if my answer is going to be even or odd. And I knew on this one I had two even numbers, so my answer or product in a multiplication problem has to be even. This one has two evens, so it has to be even. This one has one even and one odd. That's going to end up being an even answer, because whatever I have an even multiple, it's going to be even. This one has one even, one odd, so the answer is going to be even. This one has one even, one odd, so it's going to be even. This one has two odds. So that's the only way I'm ever going to get an odd product is if I have two odds. So the first five, you better have all even answers or they're not going to be right. The last one should be an odd answer. So the first problem, I have two eights. Doubles are easy. Eight and eight are 16. <clears throat> the second problem, I noticed that four is just double two. So I can just take this answer and double it. So 16 doubled is 32. Next problem is the same way. I have seven doubled is 14. Two doubled is four, so I can just double that answer to get here. Now again, I'm gonna get 28. <clears throat> Next problem is a times nine. A lot of times when I do times nine, I'd like to do, change that nine to a 10 and say eight times 10 is 80. Then I'm gonna take away a group of eight to make this answer 72. Now if you look, even, 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 all those answers are even, so chances are they're all gonna be correct. Next one, I have nine times nine. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make them one into a 10. So I'm gonna do nine times 10 is 90. Now I have to take a great group of nine. I'm gonna get 81. And I have two odd numbers that I'm multiplying by, and I have an odd answer, so I did okay. <clears throat> Next one, find the perimeter and area of this rectangle. Now. I'm going to do the perimeter first. I think it's easiest. I'm going to label this side. I always like to label my sides, like I've told you before. Then I like to add the cross sides. 21 and 21 are 42. 7 and 7 are 14. 42 and 14 are 56 yards for my perimeter. I'm going to do area. An area, again, is length times width. And I'm gonna move that over. So I'm gonna use this rectangle and make it into an area multiplication problem. I'm gonna split that 21 into a 20 and a one. Seven times 20, I'm gonna do seven times two, is 14. I gotta tack on that zero for the placeholder. Seven times one is seven. So if I add 140 and 7, I get 147 square yards for an answer. All right, here we go and work on our word problem for the day. So Jaren made a deal with his sister, Arya. Jaren had 40 Snickers bars, and he said he'd give his sister, Arya, two-fifths of them. That means every... Every five bars, she gets two. Now, I want to know who got the most. So if I know if Jaron had those cut into fifths, he started out with five fifths. He gave away two fifths to Aria. And subtracting fractions is just like adding. If my denominators are the same, I just subtract my numerators. So. 5 minus 2 is 3, and my denominator stays the same. <clears throat> 7 plus 
So Arya ended up with two fifths. Jaren ended up with three fifths. And since three fifths is larger than two fifths, Jaren has the most candy bars. <clears throat> now the extra credit problem. How many bars did each one of them get? So to do this problem, I am going to Sorry about that, I had a little cough. I'm gonna lay my candy bars out into groups of five. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And out of every group of five, Aria got two. So here's a group of five, Aria got two. She had two out of this group of five. So Aria is going to get two out of every group of five. So Aria got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Jaren has three out of every group of five. So he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times three is 24. So Jerry got 24 out of 40. Aria got 16 out of 40. So hopefully she was happy. I don't think I would have let Aria do my work, Jerry. I think you're better than that. And Aria is really good. Okay. Here we go for a few more problems for you. We have some fractions, and I would like you to put them on the line from smallest to largest. I'm going to give you a hint how to get started on this, and then I'm going to ask you to write them down on your own, and then come back and check with me. Whenever I have a number line, I always like to find the half spot on here, and then I label it. So I'm going to say this is right about half, and I'll label it one half. That way I know any fraction that's bigger than a half has to go on that side of the line. Anything less than a half has got to go on this side. In fact, one half was one of my fractions. So I'm going to just drag that down and put it right there. I know that's good. So now what I'm looking for is fractions that are bigger than a half and fractions that are smaller than a half. So I'm going to say three out of four. I know two out of four is half, so I know three out of four is going to be on this side. One out of eight. That's definitely less than a half. Five out of eight is going to have to go on this side, so I'm going to throw it over there. One out of four is going to go on this side, because that's less than two out of four. Nine out of eight, ooh, I tried to trick you with that one. I know it's got to go over here. And six out of eight. So now my fractions, it's going to be a little easier to put them on the line. You go ahead and figure out where they're going to go, and I'll come back and help you. Come back when you're ready, and I'll help you with that. These two ones that are smaller, one half. I know if I had a candy bar and I cut it up into eight pieces, and I only had one piece out of eight, I'd be kind of sad. I'd rather have one piece out of four if I cut up that same candy bar into fourths. So I know one fourth is going to be smaller than, or one fourth is going to be bigger than one eighth. So I'm going to go right there. In fact, I know one fourth is half of a half. All right, now I have these ones. I'm going to look in this 9 out of 8. I know that 8 out of 8 is one whole, so I know this is bigger than one whole. So I know that's got to go down here on the end. Now I have 5 out of 8 and 6 out of 8. I know 6 out of 8 is more than 5 out of 8 because my denominator is the same. I just have more pieces. So I know 6 out of 8 is bigger than 5 out of 8. Now I have 3 quarters. Is it going to be bigger than 5 eighths? I would like to change 3 quarters into eighths to compare these. It's equal to how many eighths? To make a 4 into an 8, I have to multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply this 3 by 2 and get 6. And I just noticed that 3 quarters and 6 eighths are the same fraction. So if your number line looks something like mine, you probably did a pretty good job. 
Here are a few more fractions for you to compare. And I asked you to go ahead and put a greater than, less than, or equal to sign next to them. Some of them I'm even going to be able to use that number line. I already know that one quarter is greater than one eighth. I'd rather have a quarter of a bar of gold than an eighth of a bar of gold. Now this fraction, the denominator is the same. I'm going to take the one with the bigger numerator because I'd rather have four pieces of gold out of a bar that's cut into five than two pieces. So I know this one is larger. This one, I have seven eighths and one whole. So I'm going to try to convert that one whole into eighths. I know one whole would be eight out of eight. So I know one whole is bigger than seven eighths. This one, my denominator is the same. I'm going to take the one with the bigger numerator. That would be larger. Next to it may be a little more difficult. So I have two fifths and four tenths. It's hard to compare them because the denominators are not the same and the numerators are not the same. I want to change this two fifths into tenths. To do that, I'm going to multiply that five by two and I'm going to get 10. I'm going to multiply the two by two and I get four. So two fifths is equal to four tenths. So those two fractions are equal. Nine twelfths and three quarters. I have to do the same thing I just did with that one. I want to change quarters to twelfths if I can. And if, to make a four to a twelve, I have to multiply by three. So four times three is twelve. Three times three is nine. And I realize those two are equal. I just have one more problem for you, and it's a problem you've done before. Um, it's finding a missing side on a polygon when you know that the perimeter is 68. So see if you can figure out what that side is. Go ahead and pause your video, figure it out, and come back and check with me. So I know my perimeter is 68 centimeters. So when I add up all of these sides, it has to equal 68. So I'm going to add up the sides that I know, and whatever I have left over has got to be this question mark. Now, usually when I add these, I like to start and go around counterclockwise, or go or clockwise or counterclockwise. Sorry about that. Um, or sometimes I like to jump around if I see good combinations. So I see a four and a sixteen. I know four and sixteen are twenty, so I'm going to add those two together. And I see a seven and a thirteen. I know seven and thirteen are twenty, so I'm going to add those two together. And I see a nine and an eleven. And I know those are 20, so I'm going to add those together. Now, you notice that I put a little mark on each line when I added it. I did that so I'd know that I added that side in. And it looks like I have all of my sides except for my missing side. So I know my total is 68. I add those three 20s together, I get 60. So I'm going to do 68 minus 60. And I'm going to get... So this side must be eight centimeters long. And that's going to be the end of your lesson today. 13 minutes and 42 seconds. Hopefully you didn't think that was too long. I've been getting yelled at by especially McKinsey for having lessons too long. Um, your pink book assignment today is page 131 and 132. Anybody who wants to stay with me? Pink book. Anybody wants to stay with me? I'm going to do some enrichment math with you. If not, go get that stuff done and get your dream box done this week. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, enrichment people, here we go. We're going to go back and do one of those missing number multiplication problems and see how you do on that. I'm going to ask you to pause your computer, try to work it out, and then come back and work it out with you. You have to put those two ones up there. So hopefully that helps you. It's going to help a lot. Okay. Here we go. First one, I know that I have to have something times six. 
has to end in an eight. So I'm thinking of all my six multiplications, what do I multiply six by to get to an eight at the end? And now six times two is 12, six times three is 18. Would I put down an eight and carry a one? I would. So I'm thinking this number has to be three. Okay, next one. I have this number, don't know what it is, but I know if I add it to a two, I'm going to get to a five. So what could it be? What do I add to two to get to five? This number has to be a three. So this times that plus one, I have to end up in a three. Actually, I have to end up in 13. So three times what is 13? Three times four is 12, plus one is 13. So I know that has to be a four. Now I can just finish this out. Two times six, I put down Waldo here, he's sideways because, oh, I can make that change. I forgot to do, I should have done that. I have Waldo. Two times six, I have put that down because I can't have anything in one spot. Two times six is 12. Cross that off, carry a one, put down my two. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. So eight plus nothing is eight, three plus two is five, one plus nine is 10. And that's how I would do that problem. Okay, ready for another problem? So go ahead and multiply 83 times 42, and you can do it in whatever way you'd like. Um, Pause your computer, come back, and I'll do it a couple, two, three different ways for you. Good luck. Okay, here we go. I told you I'd do it a few different ways for you. Let's do area model first. And I'm going to just do that front end multiplication. I'm going to do 4 times 8. Double 8 gets 16. Double 16 gets 32. And I have to tack on my two zeros for placeholders. So I get 3,200. 4 times 3 is 12. Tack on that 0 for the placeholder. In this box, I have 2 times 80. 2 times 18 is... 2 times 8 is 16. Tack on that 0 for a placeholder. And 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to add these two together. 160 and 120 is 280, 286 and 3,200. Add those together. I get 3,486. And let's see if that's the same thing I get when I do it the other ways. Here's my area model. I know I have to get times 42. So I'm going to do multiply 83 and I'm going to do it 42 times. 83 doubled. 80 doubled is 160. 3 doubled is 166. Now, if I can multiply that by 20, I can just tack on a 0. Because I already did multiply that by 2. So I tack on a 0 and get 1,660. To multiply that by 40, I'm just going to double it. So 0 doubled is going to be 0. 6 doubled is going to be 12. I'll carry a 1. 6 doubled is 12 plus 1 is 13. And I get 4,320. And then I have to add these two together to get there. So I'm going to end up with 4,400. What did I do? This is a three. Some days my head isn't working, people. 3,000.
somehow something happened with my computer, but it's going again. And I just went, on did, went ahead and did this problem for you. And hopefully if you did standard algorithm, your numbers look like mine. And we ended up with the same answer. And this problem over here disappeared somehow when I got my glitch in the computer. I had a glitch in my head too, but that's okay. Let's do another problem. This one I'm gonna just do with you because this one has a little bit of a problem inside of the problem. And if I were doing this problem, I could do it any way I wanted it. I could easily do it standard algorithm, which is the way I'm gonna do it, or I could do area model. So I'm gonna do 24 times 206. I'm gonna forget about that too. This zero is the problem right now. So I have four times six is 24. I'm gonna put down my four, carry my two. Now here's where I'm gonna run into a problem. Four times zero is zero. Now I have to add two. Zero plus two is two. Now I have four times two, that's eight. I'm all done with my four. I'm gonna to have to put down the wall though because I'm gonna multiply by a 10, this number in the 10 spot now. Two times six is 12, I'll put down my two. I'm gonna put a line through that and carry a one. Two times zero is zero. I'm gonna add one. Zero plus one is one. Two times two is four. If I add this problem, I should get 4,944. Now, if you remember back to my very first part of our warm-up in our math, I said if I multiply it by numbers that are even, my product had to be an even answer. And I have an even answer here. So I know I have a better chance of having that right. If this would have been an odd answer and I was multiplying by evens, it would have been a problem. Okay, I'm gonna put one up and you work through this one and then we'll see how you did. Go ahead, write that problem down. Pause your computer, do the problem, and come back with me. All right, so first I'm going to forget about that 3 multiplied by the 2. 2 times 9 is 18. Put down an 8, carry a 1. 2 times 0 is 0. Add 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. I multiply by a 10, so I can't have any in the 1 spot. 3 times 9 is 27. Put down my 7. I'd use that one, I'm gonna carry a two. Three times zero is zero, plus two is two. Three times three is nine. If I add those, I get 9,888. I have an even times an odd, even times an odd's gonna give me an even answer. So hopefully you agreed with me and you have the same answer. Let's do one more problem. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit shorter for you today, too. I have 428 divided by 8. You can figure it out any way you want. You can do loops and groups. You can do long division. Or you could do a ratio table. You figure it out. Come back and check with me once you get it done. Okay. Here we go. Let's do loops and group first. I have 428, and I have eight groups. I'm going to cover up the numbers after the four. How many eights in four? There are none. How many eights in 42? I know five times eight is 40, so I'm going to go with five. And I covered up one number, so I'm going to start with 50. 50, 100, 150, 200. 250, 300, 350, 400. I've used up 400 of this so far, and I have 28 left. How many eights are in 28? Well, one times eight is eight, two times eight, 16, three times eight is 24. I'm gonna have to go with that. So I can put three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. I used up 24 more of it. I have four left over. 
So I'm going to get 53 with the remainder of 4, or 53 and 4 over 8. I know 4 over 8 is equal to half, so I can say 53.5. Those are all the same answers. So let's come over and do a ratio table. I want to go how many 8s and 428. I'm going to start the same way. How many 8s and 4? None. 42, that's 50. So I can say 8 times 50 is 400. Take one to four, I have 28 left. I'm gonna say three. Eight times three is 24. I have four left. So I get 53. Four out of eight. Last one, I'm gonna just pretty much do the same thing. How many eights and four? None. How many eights and 42? Five. Five times eight is 40. Subtract, I get two. Two is smaller than eight. Bring down my 8. How many 8s in 28? I'm going to say 3. That's 24. If subtract, I get 4. I'm going to show you where we get a decimal from. I'm all going to have numbers bring me down, but I can put a decimal point here and tap down to 0, because that doesn't change my number at all. If I put that decimal point there, I'm going to put 1 here too. I'm going to bring that 0 down. How many 8s in 40? I know there are 5. 5 times 8 is 40. If I subtract, I get 0. So it's 53.5. Um, hopefully you enjoyed your enrichment math. You can go and work on your pink book pages 131 and 132 and get ready for Kids' Choice Day tomorrow. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later.